with the news. And now for our weekly news segment. Hey guys. Yeah, Tony. Tony! It's been a long time, man. I know. It's a bit difficult just because that uh, time zone, because it's 6 p.m. It's kind of more difficult, so that's why sometimes I, I can make it, but where, oh, where are you? Not the time you're in. It's crazy. Uh, I'm in Romania still. Oh, you're still there. Wow. Yeah. You look all grown up, man. You look like you look like uh, a grown man now. It's been a long time. I know. Is that what Romania does to you? Does it mature you faster? <laughs> Is life life good over there? Yeah, yeah. It's actually interesting because a lot of when I'm in the U.S., everybody's kind of scared to go, especially in this area because of the war in Ukraine and. Uh, they're saying how how can you go but even though there's a war there uh and in other places as well now in the world people still live life as they can as they still have fun and i mean we're not really affected by it we just get a lot a bunch of uh ukrainians but um um uh, yeah it's it's good <laughs> oh you're getting you're getting a lot of ukrainians coming in to romania yeah like i think um Last year, when I came back again, I was just I kept hearing Ukrainian in the city, and it was so odd. And I was like, "What the hell? Did I forget my own language?" Or, and I was like, "No, this is actually like a lot of Ukrainian people," uh, because where I live, um, it's like five hours away from the border with Ukraine, so it's very, very close. Yeah, yeah, wow, yeah, yes. And also we have Moldova, and there's some stuff. I mean, yeah, it's a lot of stuff, but it's mm -hmm. good. What's the uh, what's the crypto scene these days in Romania? Um, you know, people do know about Monero actually. Um, people invested invested in um, the local. There was a local cryptocurrency called Elron, which is actually made in my hometown. And um, yeah, that was that was. Um, Remember you told me about that? Yeah, yeah, the local crypto, huh? Interesting. Oh, yeah, but it's actually like it was top fifteen. I think. Yeah, Algorand was bit was large at some point. It was large, yeah. So a lot of people knew about that, um, and then other than that, I mean, it's kind of like in the U.S. Maybe like people know about it, they're aware, but not especially during this time. Not many people maybe invest. Only the ones that you know know more of it. So mm -hmm. overall, it's okay. I mean, it could be a lot better, but people do know of Monero, which is nice. Yeah, I mean, I mean, things uh, obviously everywhere. I think uh, you know, price is down, so people aren't paying attention. Yeah, for sure. Uh, but not in Monero. Like, like people know about it, they're aware. But things uh, grow in adoption. For sure. Um, but yeah, take it away with the news, man. I know we got a lot, of, a lot of stuff. So yes. go ahead, go for it. Also, what I wanted to say is that um, it's kind of interesting how I mean, overall, Monero boils down to just privacy and having financial freedom which it will enable more overall freedom um but because it, it ties into politics and, and economy and there's always things to talk about in that regard and also of course updates to monero so i think there's going to be endless endless monero news because i was in the beginning i was thinking you know i mean i guess or i guess you you mentioned one time dog that people said that maybe you're gonna run out of stuff to say eventually but not really it's endless stuff yeah, I mean, it's the the Monero represents, in my mind, the opposite to you know this this movement towards one world government, all that stuff. So yes. as as that grows, the importance and significance of Monero grows. So there's there's no shortage of Monero news. No, uh, as as no. we fight world techno tyranny, for sure not. Um, but yeah, the first thing that I want to mention is. Uh, fluorine Fermi update, which has been released. So let's um, let's open it. So this is version 0.18.3.1, release of the Monero software, and it's a lot of stuff. This release optimizes wallet refresh and contains important bug fixes. So it's a huge update. Um, optimizes wallet refresh by reducing periodic RPC calls and a lot of other things. Um, here's the con contributors for the release. So if you want to know more about it, um, Click on the on the on the link and then make sure to update as well. Then Gombat uh, posted on Twitter to whoever I sold. He said, "There's a thousand ARS bill for Monero at last Monero Tobia conference. I informed you that today its value has finally gone below one dollar USD." And with that, 
the last bill of the native fauna of uh, the Argentine Republic series perishes. By far, Hornero, our national bird. Yeah, um, inflation in <laughs> inflation in Latin America is crazy. Yeah, out of control. It's yeah, it's out of control, which is it's very sad. But also, like they have really beautiful banknotes, actually. <laughs> That's really nice. Beautiful <laughs> worthless banknotes. Yeah. <laughs> Collectors item one day. Except there's well, it sucks because the U.S. still, you know, with the ridiculous amount of inflation we already have. Mm -hmm. uh which still isn't nearly as bad as other countries we have the ugliest dollar bills we have the strongest dollar but the ugliest looking bills i i was gonna say that but i <laughs> i mean it's because they kind of all look the same but i mean the the one thing that i do like when it comes to us dollars is that the size is the same for one dollar bill uh 10 50 because in romania we have all different sizes so i literally have to actually i'll show you i have to carry oh two. yeah it's like gold backs I have to carry. Oh, oh that's I funny. Show, yeah, I have, I have to carry two wa two wallets because, for example, five looks like this, and it gets significantly larger the bigger the value. Hundred is like this. I hope you can see it. Oh yeah, that's like a it's like a one and a five gold back. Yeah, and then it gets even bigger than this. But they're like bigger. They're like huge. Actually, no. This is kind of the same. And I think there's one more five hundred bill, and I think that one is huge. So. And I can tell yeah, that I mean, one thousand is really long. That one's like, yeah. What so, is, I mean, what is the stability of the uh, currency in Romania? What what it's what's inflation like over there? I'm not sure about the actual numbers, but for example, I know last December I used to pay for a certain um, milk brand brand eleven in our currency, and now it's eighteen, which is a lot. It almost yeah, doubled. Yeah, I've seen that everywhere. I mean, yeah so i mean it's or for example okay back this is like 2000 i'll give you like larger time frame 2011 a sandwich was 2.5 in our currency and you divide that by five to get the dollar amount so it's like 50 cents now it's so from 2.5 but imagine it's like in dollars 2.5 dollars let's say but in my currency now it's like 10 for the same like 10 years later so Inflation is, it, it's obviously not as bad as Latin America, and I can't complain, but I mean, you know, you can definitely see one plus two plus three different differences in, in, in the prices, like one, two, three more dollars. Yeah, yeah cost of goods, everything's going up. I mean, that's even in the US, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, like I was going in the US in a store and I wanted to buy some tortilla and stuff, and I was like, I was shocked by how much I paid for those stuff and how much cheaper they were. My my brother in law gave me this yesterday. Sil silver coin, crew grand. Oh, cool. Uh, yeah. Oh, heck that's yeah. really nice. Some actual value. Yeah, I love it. I got a couple of these. Uh, but I, this is this is growing, man. There's a lot of people that are get are re are waking up right because of inflation, yeah. and they're turning towards. Whether it's metals or crypto, you got a lot of people turning towards metals, which is cool. But I think that, I think that's the road to Monero, for sure. Yeah, for sure. Another thing is, I'm not sure if they've done it to silver as well, but to gold, um, they identify you for the gold, how much you bought, transfers, and stuff like that. Plus, yeah, that that's what he was telling me about. He's like, you know, I'm realizing as I bought it, uh, I had to essentially give up my ID and everything, and they know, <laughs> and they know how much, I, and it's like. You know, it's, I could see him moving tor towards Monero and understanding the importance of Monero. And then he's like thinking about, you know, where where do I store all this stuff? How do I keep it? And that's the thing. And so, what do you do like if you move or, you know? Right. Or if you want to spend, spend it on the internet, right? It's, it's a little hard to yeah. send it send it through the internet. That too. And I have a friend. And this guy, he has huge drawers, like from from the floor all the way to the ceiling with a bunch of of silver and like we were making jokes if you gotta move i mean nothing he'll think weigh hundreds of pounds <laughs> it's crazy yeah, yeah. and, and it's nothing it, you're, like you're making jokes but it's not a joke right like no, yeah, no. it hits the fan yeah something happens in, in, you know where where he's living you know similar to what we've seen in other parts of the world They'll, they'll come and take it or you got to figure out how to move with it it's 
there's so much power in being able to just have a, a you know, a 15 word phrase in, in your yeah, mind yeah. Uh, that, you, that you can move around with anywhere and store any amount of money on. It's a tremendous amount of power there. Quite literally, like yeah. you can take a notebook, you write down and you're done. That's it. All you got to do is carry this thing or your phone and you have, you can have millions of dollars stored or however much amount, you know, but in, if you have that amount in silver or gold, obviously it's, it's a mountain and you yep. know, traveling, if you go overseas, it's going to be difficult to move all of that if, if you wish to. I mean, so, yeah. Um, you ready? Now this person sold, he said, I sold all my Zcash taking 90 <laughs> plus percent <laughs> loss and moving on with my life. Also, Zcash parachute for sale. Uh, look at this pathetic um, capitulation on Zcash. Wait, parachute for sale? Asking for price to fail. Oh, wow. Oh, wow. <laughs> what is he saying here? So, he actually has a parachute with the Zcash logo, if you see. Oh, shit. Yeah, so he's oh, actually like, he has, he has a parachute shit. for sale with the Zcash logo that he's uh, I, don't, I don't know if I trust that parachute. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I hope he doesn't wow, go transparent. You know, pretty bad. I said I didn't even catch that part. So the guy actually yeah. went skydiving with those. He catch. Uh, but that's that's a pretty strong capitulation there at the bottom. To, to... now, does anybody know this guy? Is he like a? He's not like a dev or something for Zcash, is he? Well, he's a lot of followers. Crypto, a lot of followers. You're just a crypto yeah, some... uh, enthusiast, or uh, um... search, search his account real quick. See if he had, ever mentions Monero. Give it. Give a search on his uh if you could search his account, yeah. Mm. Well, I gotta scroll a little bit too. Maybe privacy. I don't think Twitter makes an easy way to query people's uh, No, not it's, really. They don't let you data scrape anymore. Oh really? I used to be able to really? feel like I used to be able to search people's tweets. Well, you might be able to like type in his name on the search and then put in uh, a word. There used to but be, since yeah. they mess with their APIs, it's like you can't you can't really do much. Yeah. Twitter. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, you can you can search your tweets. I'm doing it right here. Let's see if anything pop. No, no results. No, I didn't find anything. I mean, that could just be Twitter's poor search results, but yeah, it's interesting that somebody who's uh been in Zcash for that long, abandoning it, has not mentioned Miner. <laughs> Yeah, but he, I wonder what made him sell it because he literally took 90% plus. Loss. Maybe you're just in it for money and not really. Uh... Maybe. Yeah, he could have just been a total, uh, you know, speculator, not interested in the tech at all or whatever. Which or he guess has not been doing maybe. great in that regard. Yeah. So, he also had a parachute, so I mean, he's a hardcore shiller. <laughs> We're we're here for you, Z Cashers. When you're ready to move on to uh, true digital cash, we are here for you. <laughs> okay, now let's move on to Israel. Um, as you guys know, um, it's an ongoing war. It's not something new. It's been going on for a long time. But uh, the war, Israel, Gaza, it's devastating. But uh, unexpectedly, um, or actually expectingly. Has, um, has been done before. Israel freezes crypto accounts seeking Hamas donations, police say. So October 10th, uh, Israel, Israel has frozen cryptocurrency accounts used to solicit donations for the Palestinian militant group Hamas on social media, police said on Tuesday. Uh, Hamas launched devastating attacks from Gaza into Israel on Saturday in one of the most serious escalations in the Israel-Palestinian conflict in years. I mean, of course, they're, they're a terrorist group, as you may know. And, um, but it may, maybe it may sound bad, but, um, you should have the freedom if you, for some reason you want to donate to them, you should be able to, to do it. And you can do it with cash. Um, of course it's nice if you wouldn't, but, um, yeah, Israel can freeze your crypto accounts, uh, seeking Hamas donations. But the most important thing is that, is that. If they can freeze it in this instance, not only Israel, but other countries as well, they can freeze it at any time. If they can do it once, they can do it always. So, can I 
talk mention that title for a second freeze crypto accounts i think what, what they're talking about is freezing uh, like exchange accounts okay that yeah. uh if you read it the article i think it's like binance or something yeah you can it's play that video, video. Yeah. did you have that video i sent to there's a video clip so so my take on all i mean what what's we we all knew this was going to happen right so so here we go guys uh wars are breaking out uh people are being called terrorists and uh they're now being alleged to have used the tool of cryptocurrency to, to help uh perpetrate their crimes this is what they're gonna you know start to focus on it's we we always knew this was coming um they're gonna the 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 powers that be, the state, the government will now focus on this use case of crypto as a way to regulate it and, you know, perhaps ban it if needed. Uh, what's interesting about this is if you read the article, uh, it references um, an article from April where it says Hamas has endorsed crypto as a fundraising method for years, but said in April it would stop receiving fundraising via the cryptocurrency Bitcoin, citing an increase in hostile activity against donors. So basically saying that Bitcoin was traceable. People were making donations using Bitcoin and it was causing problems uh, and their, you know, their donors were getting harassed or they were getting uh, found out. Um, so the suggestion here is that they moved on to things that are less traceable, right? They've moved on to things like Monero. Um, and we all knew this was going to happen. You know, Monero can be used for good. It can be used for evil. Governments are going to focus on the evil aspect and say, uh, we need to get rid of tools like this because it, it funds terrorism. And, uh, you know, it, by um, I think we need to get rid of the government because the government funds terrorism. I think, yeah, I think the government does a lot more damage than uh, Monero ever can or will do for sure. But unfortunately, the masses, you know, the sheep, they they just see these headlines and they see Monero bad, crypto bad, millions of dollars was used to, to fund terrorism. So that's what we're up against. Um, so it's important, I think, for us to to fight the propaganda from day one, right? We gotta we gotta be out there, we gotta be vigilant about it, talking about all the positive aspects of crypto, um, everything that it that it in intends on doing and will do. Uh it's going to take power away from the, from the state structure it's going to eventually create less wars right as we as we defund the state defund the central banks but all these things are a little uh, are, are more difficult to to kind of grasp and understand by the average joe right the average joe sees money was sent to terrorist group terrorist group is now killing uh babies hmm. um it's because of this tool that they were able to do that. So it's it's a real uphill battle for us, but we got to be out there. We got to be vigilant. We got to be talking about all the the positives about crypto. I mean, obviously we get it, but unfortunately, we are we are the minority here, guys. I don't know what do you got. What do you guys think? Uh, I thought about something interesting while um, you are talking. So you're kind of actually donating to terrorism through taxes. Because when you pay your taxes, it doesn't go to all benevolent things. It goes to the government. And the government, especially in the U.S., they're the ones that start a bunch of wars for uh, monetary or financial gains. So <laughs> it's kind of it's interesting. Yeah. But yeah, if, if you solve money, uh, you solve a lot of these issues. Because all these wars and uh, Ukraine, Russia, and China, and Taiwan, Taiwan, now this, and... Armenia and uh, Azerbaijan, all, all these wars, um, they are because of money and and power. But all of wars are bankers' wars. For sure. All wars are bankers' wars. Uh, but most of society does, doesn't does understand that, nor no. you know, they, they can't grasp that. What they will understand is when they show horrific pictures of terrorists doing horrible things and saying they've got... They, they're receiving funding because of these tools. Um, so, you know, we saw, we saw with nine 11 and the Patriot act, right. Overnight, they were able to, they were able to pass the Patriot act, which took yes. away rights for essentially citizens around the entire world in one felt swoop that we're still, we're still dealing with the ratchet effect. It never went back to what it was, never will. And so I think, I think crypto is going to have that. Unfortunately is going to have that moment. 
you know, whether it, whether it's this go around with what's going on now in Israel or it's the next thing, you're going to see legislators move move against crypto, which is really it's really the you know, the central banks, the bankers behind them that are pulling the strings that are using this as an excuse to try Especially to without, kill this technology yeah. that's looking to kill off the central banks. The U.S. is uh, tied in with Israel. Like if it's like, oh, Monero is being used uh, to uh, fund terrorism against Israel. That's like a very swift, you know, like get rid of it kind of thing I can see happening. Yeah. It's you know, scary. actually, let me show you something uh, that I found was really funny. So there's this website called Mastercard, and it's really cool. Like it's actually really nice. And then let me see if I can see all classes. No, wait. Because you're gonna have a, you're gonna have a laugh. Oh, I've already had a laugh on this site before. Mm -hmm. What was that? I've already have a good have a good laugh on this site before. Oh yeah, okay. So they have um, classes, and you know. Oh, I can take the Hillary Clinton master class, dude. How does Bill people? Clinton one or George W. Bush? Um, uh, Hillary will teach you the the power of of emails. Followed by Bill Clinton, uh, George Bush can teach you a bit of uh, Afghanistan and Iraq. Um, <laughs> Weapons of mass destruction by George W. Bush. Yeah, I thought that was like really funny as I was scrolling through. Um, okay, so now let's move on. Uh, the last couple, actually, no. Let me mention this, and then we'll go into CBDCs, CBDC news. Um, Monero.com is back on the Google Play Store, so if you have um, Android, Monero.com is back and uh, and you can use it. Now, uh, CBDCs will improve tax collection, Argentine central banker. Of course, CBDCs will improve tax collection. T uh, collection. Um, uh, Juan Agustin Datelis Noguera publicly supported Sergio Massa in promoting a central bank digital currency as a remedy for the national economy. And then... Um, it's been mentioned in the official's opinion, the key feature for the CBDC is its traceability. By having traceability of operations with a digital currency, because it is not known who does them, but there is evidence that they were done, you brought on the tax base. This will allow you to raise more without having to raise taxes and even lower them. Okay, so that's nice because then, you know, you can see what citizens are doing it's, it's gonna sound odd but okay so you, you see what citizens are doing with the money you get the right amount of money there's no tax evasion from the citizen school but then we want to see what they do with our tax money as well so transparency in terms of that okay maybe sure but then we also need transparency from them and we need to see where every single cent from our taxes goes to is that gonna happen i don't think so <laughs> i don't think so so it's just going to be against the. Um, it's going to be a system against the population where tax evasion is going to be less um, harder and harder to do, and um, yeah. So, I mean, these Argentinians aren't going to like. They're they're already pretty aware of their financial situation. There's no way they're going to like the masses are going to take part in that. Well, I mean, just like in Nigeria, I mean, the Ina era. We talked about it in the previous episode. They had, and I think actually. I'm not sure if this is about Nigeria or yeah, this one. Okay, so the Ina era, um, they used to have 0.5% um, overall usage, and then the government pulled some strings, forced the population, and now all of a sudden, a lot of people are forced to use the Ina era. So even if you do want it or not, I mean, going to make it uh, too the offer too good, right? Going to offer you like a ton of money or discounts or whatever. Yeah, you get 20% off whatever or like the way it works in eastern europe you just give the population flour and uh <laughs> oil and then yeah i'll vote for you and it literally happens <laughs> flour and oil huh yeah actually i actually interviewed sure. this week uh a guy from nigeria econ bro hmm. recommend, recommend checking that out uh he actually did a kuno fundraiser he's looking to raise funds to spread libertarianism um throughout nigeria he's, nice. he's already been out there doing it um so I, I i it doesn't come across as a scam at all to me but you know fun i should say that right fund all these kuno things at your own risk do your own research uh that's why i'm interviewing these people too to like kind of 
put them on stage, put them on the spot a little bit. You could suss them out and make a decision based on that. But I got I got all good vibes. Um, yeah, super it like that guy was doing super cool work. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's he's actually he has video of him out there giving lectures, yeah. uh, and he's trying to spread like uh, the Austrian economics throughout Nigeria, and effectively he's trying to build up like a political party there. Like it sounds mm. like like a libertarian political party. But yeah, he he had some. Uh, he didn't know much about the CBDC, but yeah, saying you know wasn't not really being adopted there. What he, what I found interesting was he doesn't think cash will be eliminated there. Um. Mm. Because it's it's how corruption is is uh, takes place in the country, right? They use cash. All the politicians use cash. They use mm. cash primarily during the elections. They go out and they pay people to vote. So they 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 need physical cash to mm. go make these make these payments to to voters to get them to vote. So he doesn't see there being incentive on any side of of. of of the political parties there to to eliminate cash, which I thought was interesting because everybody here is thinking, all right, they're going to implement the CBDC, they're going to eliminate cash, but he doesn't think there's the political will there to eliminate it because mm. they all want it. They all want cash for their corrupt purposes. It's kind of the same in Romania as well. For example, um, rules apply. Rules don't apply to the ones that have status or are rich. I mean, the cops stop you. You pull up. A you know a couple hundreds you hand it that's it they don't do anything to you and <laughs> and things that are much much worse than that so yeah he's saying it was, it's common course it's part of every like uh, election there that you go out you take cash and you go pay people to go vote oh my god you, you can do that without cash and they they all use cash over there um so i, I found that to be interesting but it's kind of like they give you cash and then they're gonna run the country and then they're going to devalue currency even more <laughs> so yeah but nigeria has the most cryptocurrency aware population in the world uh so 99 percent of nigerians are more knowledgeable about web3 than people in major economies like the uk the united states japan and germany so that's crazy um, to me very very interesting um how how will cbcs be used for political oppression in your country I mean, we kind of talked about this. Um, CBDCs are poised to give politicians unprecedented power to track your data, um, restrict your movements, and control your life. How are they going to restrict your movements? Um, you want to fly to this country? Well, you can because you reached your carbon, your CO2 emission for this year. So, okay, you can't have the trip anymore. Um, you can't buy that meat anymore. You can't buy those eggs anymore. You can't do this and that. So, yeah, by controlling money, they actually restrict, restrict your movement and your life as well. Or you can't drive anymore. I mean, you've, you've already bought enough fuel for the month. So, so yeah. Um, and then it talks about this specifically. Then we have another article. Uh, China opens industrial park for digital yuan, CBDC development in Shenzhen. This one is actually very interesting. So the government is incentivizing new residents to come in this industrial park all together to develop payment solutions, smart contracts, hard wallets, and promotions for the digital yuan. So mm. you have a bunch of people in one place focusing just on this, on the CBDC. And they made, I mean, China made tremendous progress when it comes to CBDCs, to usage, to um, offline usage as well, which is very important. So if your phone dies, so you can still make payments with the CBDCs. Um, so they made a lot of, lot of, um, Improvements, and they say, according to reports, the district government has announced 10 initiatives to boost the development of the digital yuan ecosystem that involve payment solutions, smart contracts, hard wallets, and digital yuan promotion. Oh, wow. Incentives are being offered to residents to include up to three years free rent. Damn. Uh, was that? More... Yeah. yeah. Oh, my God. Wow. Yeah. Oh, that's... <laughs> Commercial banks can receive up to 20 million yuan, 2.7 million, uh, for settling there, while startups are eligible for are up to 50 million yuan, six, which is about $6.9 million. Total government support is set at 100 million yuan, which is like 13.7 million. Carrot before the stick. Jesus, can, can you imagine if you lived in New York and then they're like, all right, you got to do this and this and that, and then we'll give you three years of free rent in New York City? <laughs> This is the, I mean, the carrots are getting bigger before they bring out the stick. 
in, in China, there's there's not there's going to be zero resistance to the CBDC in China. They're they're already basically have you know the the negative results of what a CBDC can do in other forms, right? Everybody's yeah, there. Totally. It's, it's all already completely surveilled. All their like ninety eight percent of society is is using some government owned uh, app or system for it's making your face to scan your yeah. for your payments. Yep. Yeah. And so of course, it's... Beijing has the most security cameras per citizens in the entire world. Yeah, it's, it's insane. Just, just it's in their culture. They 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 go along with the government. They trust the government. Or it's they just, like, just know, they just know there's nothing they can do otherwise. You know, it's like, which is very uh, scary. sad to see. In China, it's kind of like they they're already very much surveilled, but CBDCs will just make it easier for them to be surveilled. So they're like, all right, you, you're you're always surveilling me. You're gonna make it easier. Fine, you know, it's not like right. Yeah, that's how if, it is, which is interesting. If, if you're gonna take away all my rights, you might as well do it in the in the easiest way possible. <laughs> <laughs> make it convenient, like damn it, you know, I, you're already surveilling me. Like, make it convenient already. It's the same thing, anyway. Yeah, yeah. I, I mean, I, already, I don't know yeah. what's gonna cause a cultural shift there. It's hard, especially so. There were experiments done in China where they tried. They told one person to get lost and. In five minutes, they found them because they have cameras with uh, uh, face recognition, and they well, every single human that walks just has like a square that identifies them. So they tell them, "Okay, run away as far as you can, and we'll find you." Five minutes, the guy was found. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, now let's discuss the last thing for this week's new section: how CBDCs and stable coins can coexist together. Um, E2 Kunainen argues against CBDCs as they are centralized by nature, of course, saying that certain dangers come with government control, <laughs> certain, a lot of uh, um, dangers. So the recent Future Innovation Summit event held in Dubai, that sounds actually pretty cool. Uh, Cointelegraph moderated a panel titled Stablecoins, CBDCs and Cross-Border Payments to explore, explore if CBDCs and stablecoins can coexist and how this would be um, possible, which um, is very interesting and then they talked about um there's a quote and it says let's say that they don't like some political rivals they can with one click freeze the other party's assets so what gives us any security that they won't use this or if they are a small smaller country they're pressured by a bigger country to do so and um then also i think they can, they will coexist and probably in some years we'll, we'll see a transnational body that will take care of the cbdc's and the interop ability between them and uh, ensure that no government can pull the plug or do something that affects the interests of the people. I don't believe that. <laughs> um, last thing, according to executives, they would be the ones to determine which specific pain points exist and whether CBDCs or stablecoins would be the answer to that. The executive also believes that the two can coexist as long as stablecoins remain stable and decentralized. So will they coexist can they coexist and that's not um, to see but of course in the equation that should exist is monero which is better than than all of them it offers you privacy and it's just really well designed it's it's actually interesting because the first time when i was learning about monero it's like okay cool it has privacy but it's so much more than that with dynamic block size um and other specific specificities which a lot of other cryptos don't have or a telemission, so it has a lot of, a lot of um, uh, touches that make it stand out way more than its privacy, which is going to be way and beyond than what it is today with Seraphis and and um, so on. So yeah, Monero is a powerhouse, and um, in a way, it is bad the way the world is is heading with CBDCs and such. But it's just going to force people to wake up and you know look into things like Monero and maybe the world is going to be a better place then you know it will be it's it's here waiting for anyone it's it's not going anywhere can't it's can't be not. stopped can't be stopped it's it's the polar opposite of a cbdc and so when people wake up and realize they don't they don't want to be part of that uh they'll be looking for another solution for sure yeah you want to uh share the video i sent in the telegram real quick it's related yeah, to sure. the uh insane inflation 
I think, I don't know why, um, there's one more article, but I couldn't open it because it's from um, New York Times. And then it just tells me to subscribe. Oh, and yeah. If you do an archive.is, that might work. But yeah. Oh, I think, why didn't I open this, actually? I just sent it uh, like 20 minutes ago. Okay. Should I just play the whole thing? Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. So it says 1.75 million for a house in Bend, Oregon. Uh, 2,600 square feet. Seriously, listen to this guy explain the local market and how crazy it is for the income in this area, in the area. What are we missing here? Why is it so expensive there? How are younger people ever expected to afford any homes? And they're not. I mean, they've doubled in the last couple of years. They're already unaffordable and now they're doubling even more. So let's see how a $1.75 million house uh, looks like in Oregon. At first glance, this house might look pretty normal, actually just like a pretty plain Jane regular house. But it is currently listed for $1.75 million. <laughs> Jesus. It serves as just another example of the whole West Coast becoming just a playground for the ultra rich. It blows my mind that someone would buy a place like this for almost $2 million. The place doesn't even have a yard. You can see up here, there's some little natural landscape, whatever, but you don't even have a yard. Natural landscape. It's your neighbor's driveway. If you wanted to buy a place like this and you actually lived and worked in the city I'm from, You'd have to make like four hundred and fifty thousand dollars a year. And you know what? The average job around here pays about fifty grand, and the average household brings in about seventy-five grand. And all the new homes here are being built at a price point that is at least double to triple what the average family here could afford. And this problem only continues to get worse as all the land that they open up for development goes to these developers who want to build these planned communities with these incredibly expensive homes. There's an open house in there right now. I would take you guys for a tour, but I've heard through the grapevine that all the realtors in town, they just really can't stand me. <laughs> they really can't stand me. <laughs> that's that's yeah. crazy. That house is about the same size as my parents' house, which they got for like 150K back in 2001, I think. Oh, wow. So that... Still like, quite a lot, no? For that time. Yeah, I mean, it's hard amount, but um, yeah, that's that's crazy. Yeah, I mean, and most sure. places aren't quite that insane, but for whatever reason, that specific area is just like rapid inflation. Yeah. The whole point is for you to not own anything, to not own assets, to make them so expensive that you can't even afford them. Renters anymore. market only, and even yeah. then, you can't afford to rent anymore. Yeah, even that, even Prentice. Oh, these homes are, are owned by whatever, like BlackRock, or right. I mean, not all these, but they, they, it's a lot. Of, you know, a lot of these large investment firms are are buying up properties like these as well and just renting things out. It's insane when you look at stocks and you look at top five holders. It's always BlackRock. BlackRock. Uh, two hundred million shares of this. Two hundred million shares. I mean, they have trillions and trillions of dollars of its assets. It's crazy. Oh much money to have there has been talk of something that could perpetuate a real estate collapse being uh the the amount of people that bought airbnbs i think that that's an interesting theory hmm. uh, if you look at all the airbnbs out there and people kind of got over leveraged overexposed people went out oh, yep. bought a lot of these properties took like, out mortgages. Oh, yeah, so much money coming in now now that things are getting out of control people are not spending as much or moving or going on vacations and... right as people start if people stop renting out the airbnbs uh you're gonna have a lot of people stuck with like these properties that they just can't pay the, pay the mortgage on so there might be some relief there potentially but otherwise it's hard to see where the relief is going to come because there's just such a shortage of supply nobody has anywhere to to freaking live and buy a home so uh, supply demand there's just not enough supply hmm. and i i don't know why we're not i don't technically really understand why we're not seeing enough homes being now built because of that shortage and why instead we're seeing homes like this being built uh, See, they're doing the exact same thing uh, near where i live instead of building a lot of houses like there are some houses being built they're building these tight-knit town houses right like the, these condos like you just got like a bunch of these like and they're just tearing down these entire areas just to build these they're not building actual homes with like property they're just building these little townhouse condos which you know i mean some of them you might be able to buy because i know like condos, condos sometimes you can buy but it's like a lot of them will be rent only 
and like it's so much worse than people being able to buy a house like you know 30 years ago on a single income now you can't even afford to rent a lot of times on a single income no uh the new york times article you can't get it up there was it was an interesting one yeah no because i got you give me yeah see if you get that up see like you can but then in like okay maybe i oh, was it working Wait. this time oh there That's it is I, can I, I will you? i will search for here's a, here's a little trick okay if you go to either archive.org or archive.is you put that url in usually someone's already uh, snapshotted it and that's a way oh. to do it free yep so i'll send it to you in telegram since i just pulled it up so i have to get a meta slide up or you know get my console <laughs> and do some do some work mm. that's a good little trick that's archive.is oh yep. cool wow that's... there you go yep Okay, that, that's actually really cool. Um, so across US, Chinese Bitcoin mines draw national security scrutiny. Microsoft reported one site in Wyoming because of its proximity to a data center and nuclear missile base. Records show other cryptocurrency facilities have ties to the Chinese um, state. When a company with Chinese origins broke ground last year on a crypto mining operations in Cheyenne, Wyoming, a team of, at Microsoft that assesses national security threats sounded the alarm. Not only was a site next door at the, to a Microsoft data center that supported the Pentagon, it was about a mile away from an Air Force base that controlled nuclear armed intercontinental ballistic missiles. Uh, the location could allow the Chinese to pursue full spectrum intelligence collection uh, operations that the Microsoft team wrote in an August 2022 report to, to the Committee on Foreign Investment in the United States, a federal body that monitors threats posed by overseas um, investors. Microsoft warning did not go um on heated and then they also have some pictures yeah, it's, it's, it's a long article basically yeah. it's talking about these large asic mining farms that are being built in areas around around the country in the u.s uh, which, we're, which we're all aware of uh and some of them appear to be owned by uh the chinese government um and so this is just as an example of just another attack surface for Bitcoin, right? We've talked about this before. ASIC mining farms are, I believe, are, are an attack surface for Bitcoin. Uh, whether it's regulators coming in saying, we need to, you know, these things are using up too much fossil fuel, so we need to put regulations on them, or whether it's uh, mandating that these that these mining farms be OFAC compliant, right? So they're, they're a target. They're a target that can be approached by the government. And so here, here we're seeing politically it becoming a problem because they're concerned about who's owning these mining farms. So it's just another attack surface, right? So you might see regulators move in and try to pass laws, whatever, saying who, who can and can't own a Bitcoin mining farm. They're concerned that uh, China could use these to essentially take out our grid or could use them to uh, as a database to, to spy on people. Whatever it is, um, doesn't really matter. It just shows that large ASIC mining farms can be approached by governments, by the state, and it's an attack surface for, for something like Bitcoin. As opposed to something like Monero, where theoretically we're never going to see large Monero mining farms owned by large corporations. The incentive just doesn't exist. So I, that's kind of what I get out of this. The most you can see is a bunch of apartment complexes mining Monero <laughs> in synchronicity, but... <laughs> It's it's a problem, right? Monero is supposed to be, I mean, uh, Bitcoin is supposed to be decentralized and unstoppable. Mm -hmm. And when you when you have a few companies that own all these mining farms uh, and all the all the equipment, all the hardware is essentially coming from the same company. These companies can be approached by the state. They can be pushed around. They can be regulated. Um, that's what we're seeing here. And to be fair, we still have a little bit of uh, some of those challenges with Monero, like uh, where sometimes the pools will, you know, get close to that 40, 50 percent mark. But people seem to back off pretty quickly. All that needs to be is like making pool to pool better, incentivizing that. And then also potential uh, issues with companies like Bitmain, who, you know, will 
seems to be the only company that's making actual Monero miners. The incentives still aren't as good as with Bitcoin because with Bitcoin, it's it's a lot easier because you can do the ASICs and stuff and there's more money around there. Um, but it's still something to, you know, consider. It's, what better, it's better, but not perfect. saying that, that uh, we could start to see ASIC mining farms for Monero? No. What no, you not ASIC, but I'm like... So Bitmain had their Monero miners, right? The uh, Antminer X5. Right. And they put those ones away and they're selling those, but they made those a few years ago. So like, let's say they are working on another one or they have one coming out next year. Mm -hmm. Who knows how much hash rate that'll take up because, you know, a few years difference with, especially with RISC-V technology, because it's a lot newer, that could be quite a large difference. So I don't know, just yeah. speculation. Yeah, yeah, speculation. But I mean, as far as, as far as I could, it doesn't seem like the incentive will ever exist. No, for and that's the thing. Like, they're the only one doing market. that. That's, that's right. doing that. Uh, yeah. and they're not right now. So the incentive is very just not there compared to with Bitcoin. Yeah, the the efficiency you're getting out of it is not enough to to warrant building these these large ASIC mining farms to to compete. Just doesn't 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 exist for you to to invest all this all that money into to building out a, a large center that would just mine monero when the the economies of scale just aren't there whereas with bitcoin they are right so that was it for this week's news section let me stop sharing this yeah so that was the new section guys Thanks All so right. much for joining us, and um, right. we'll see you next week. Thanks, Tony.